Hi, this is Terry Couty with Deep Sea Foundation, and I have the privilege of talking to Dr. David Song today from MedStar Georgetown University. Welcome, Dr. Song. Great to be here. Thank you for having me, Terry. Oh, thanks for, thanks for being here. We're going to talk today uh, with Dr. Song about alternate flaps. I had deep flap, but he's going to talk to us about alternate flaps in breast reconstruction. That's right. There's a lot of options for patients seeking autologous reconstruction or reconstructing a breast with your own body tissues. Everyone knows about the deep flap, obviously, because of Terry. Uh, we know about uh, you know the gap flap even, sort of the buttock, the gluteal artery perforator flap. Um, I've written extensively about something called the vertical upper gracilis flap, so the inner thigh. Um, I've also, our paper's coming out um, very shortly on the lift flap, the latissimus immediate fat transfer. So mm -hmm. using the back without any implants oh. and doing liposuction to fill that. Okay. Um, there's, there's also something called the PAP flap, P-A-P flap, mm -hmm. which is the pudendal artery or the profunda artery, sorry, profunda artery perforator flap, mm -hmm. which is a neat flap as well. So then there's a tug flap, which is just a different configuration using the gracilis muscle, which is more transverse as opposed to vertical. So there's a whole host of options. Um, a lot of my colleagues are work working on something called a lumbar artery perforator flap. So using perforators from the back area. I've done it once. Um, it's, it's an interesting flap. I think it works best when you combine it with a deep flap for a larger volume reconstruction. So these are all the really cool flaps that are uh, coming of age, um, that are being popular. A lot of uh, us microsurgeons love it. It's just a matter of managing the donor site and utilizing the best excess, if you will, uh, on a patient's body for breast reconstruction and then, of course, as a secondary benefit um, to recontour the body. And, and I'm guessing, too, the uh, viability of the blood vessels in those different areas, too, is important. They, they, Absolutely. And they vary, right? And they vary. Yes. So these alternative flaps, many of my colleagues will actually get a CT scan with uh, to visualize the blood vessels or an MRI to visualize the blood vessels, which is called an MRA. Uh, which is magnetic resonance angiography. Uh, this allows the surgeon to plan you know, where the incisions are, where the perforators are, where the blood vessels are to further make the operation more successful and, uh, and more efficient. So there's a whole host of really cool tricks um, and new flaps that are coming about. And the lumbar flap that you talked about, is that sometimes called the love handle? The love handle flap, ah. or so it's the LAP flap, lumbar artery perforator flap, or some people colloquially call it the love handle That's artery perforator flap. the area. Flap. Yeah. yeah. So it's okay. right in the, in the area of the love handle. And um, that's a neat flap if, we, if patients have that artery there and have mm -hmm. that excess there. Wow. Very interesting information. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you, Dr. Song. Mm -hmm.